Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10 minute talk that gives a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now we have James Dickham. He's going to be talking about PHP's built in reflection. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave James some feedback. James, take it away. <laughs> Hey, uh, thank you very much for having me uh, back on Nomad PHP. So I've got uh, quite a lot of content to get through, so I'm going to go through as quickly as I can. Um, hopefully not too quickly. Uh, just a quick introduction to myself. Uh, my name is James Sikkim. Uh, I work for Rove, um, and I also organize the PHP South Coast Conference and the PHP Hampshire User Group. So check those out if you're ever in the south of the UK. All right, uh, today so I'm going to talk about reflection, uh, as, as Joe already said. Uh, a bit sort of reflection. Um, or by the end of this talk, you might feel it's a bit more like this sort of reflection. So it's looking into your PHP scripts with this spectacularly well-drawn magnifying glass. Um, so reflection, what is it? It's basically looking at the structure of your code. Uh, there could be classes, methods, properties, functions, and so on. Uh, it's also looking in the metadata. Uh, so, for example, this class is on line 123 in file abc.php, for example. It's also looking at the actual values themselves, uh, and also looking at type introspection, which is sort of examining what types of variables are. Uh, and it's also the ability to modify that uh, to a certain extent. So how does it work? Well, the Reflection API in PHP is just basically a public API to the structure of the code. It's implemented as, as a C extension in PHP, uh, which is usually built in. Uh, and the implementation is really simple. It's about 6,000 lines of C code. And looking through it, there's actually very, only a few things that you have to know uh, about how it actually interacts with it. And mostly, to be honest, it's directly accessing stuff in the Zend engine. For example, hash table lookups, uh, which is looking at big arrays if you're not sure what a hash table is. It's direct value modification, um, and pretty much mostly just helper macros and built-in Zend functions. For example, this is uh, pretty much most of the, the reflection class has method implementation. You can see here that aside from all the craft that's doing checking and seeing where we are in the code, all we're doing is doing a zen hash strip exists. And what we're doing there is using the class entry or the CE variable, um, which has a function table. That function table is a hash map or an array, if you like, which has a list of the functions that are in that class. And this simply just checks if the hash map contains the lowercase name uh, of, of the method you, that you try to find. All right, that's fairly simple. So what now? Well, I'm going to introduce to you something called better reflection. It's reflection. What? What does that mean? Well, it's a library that uh, we've been working on at Rove. Uh, currently, it's almost compatible with the core reflection API, but it's got some extra features, some cool features that you might like. For example, being able to find types, and we use PHP documents and libraries that are written by Mike Real for this. Um, we can also do things like reflect on classes that haven't even been loaded yet. For example, you can take a file or a string and reflect on the classes within that without even loading it into PHP. There's a few other goodies that we've thrown in so far, and there's plenty more stuff planned. All right, so why have we done this? What's wrong with core reflection? Um, to be honest, most of the purposes day to day, it will probably fulfill your needs if you're just accessing a uh, you know, private variable uh, during uh, 
you know, you get testing or something like that, depending on your view on that. Um, you know, it's it does the job just fine, and it's actually not as slow as some people think. But your basic needs is fine, but it is actually quite limited. As I said, it requires classes to be loaded already, and it also doesn't have awesome superpowers. So how does this actually work? In better reflection, we have this thing called a source locator. A source locator is instructions on finding source code. Uh, this might be a string, a file from the disk. It might be something that's auto-loaded. It might be something that's auto-loaded using Composer. Once you've found the source code, we have this magic awesome source. This is the magic of the AST. Better reflection superpowers come from using this AST. Wait, AST? An AST is an abstract syntax tree. Don't worry, all this is is a representation of some code. It's using a non-PHP tree structure to represent the code. All in all, AST is just a data structure. It can be modified. And if you modify this, you can modify the behavior of the code as well. And it can also contain, uh, and it usually also contains metadata, for example, the line, the column, the file that the, the code was in. And it can also be unparsed as well, which basically means you regenerate or print the code out. The layout may, of course, change because once you've passed it into AST, it has no representation of the original uh, source code at all, apart from in this data structure format. Um, I'm going to use a library here that we use with it better reflection than you may have heard it before called PHP Parser. Uh, it's written by Nikita, uh, Nikita Popov, and it's a PHP Parser written in PHP. The whole premise of it is that you give it some PHP code, and it returns the abstract, abstract syntax tree, or AST. So we can load up the contents of some file, and we can output the, the AST. Simple as that. So let's have a look at what this might look like. We're going to write a script. I think we can figure out what this does. But this is a very simple script uh, to echo hello world. This is what the AST for this script might look like. I've simplified it a lot, by the way, because there's usually a lot more uh, data that goes into the AST. But you can see here I've represented it as a tree, because that's what it looks like. Then you can see at the top we've got the echo, the echo statement, we've got the child as a scalar string, and then the value of that string is hello world. Simple. Another example script here is we've got the same thing but with some simple concatenation. This makes for a slightly more uh, complex AST. We've got a concatenation operator uh, added in after the echo, and we've got a left and a right. That's because it's, concat is a binary operator. So we've got two things being added together, and these things are both strings with the value hello and well. Simple. By using this AST, we can do lots of stuff. You can compile it into opcodes, which is what HHVM and PHP 7 does. You can actually generate code from this. And you can do better reflection. Because in ASC, you have a complete representation of the structure of the code. You can analyze this and see everything about it. And what we've done is build this representation that's compatible with the core reflection API using the AST. So what's the benefits here? Well, with the AST, as I said, you've got a whole view of everything going on. You can do much more. Um, and you can add much more information into the reflection. So for example, you could fetch the AST of the function body itself. You could fetch a specific code at a specific column in a file, which isn't what the possible core reflection API at the moment. Uh, and of course, you can find the PHP documentation and uh, analyze it, like the types and so on. So, one of the core reflection problems is that once you've loaded a symbol, for example, a class has been loaded into PHP, uh, it can't be modified. You can only load a class once. So, what if you wanted to modify that, or do monkey patching, as it's called? Um, 
It's not possible with PHP once you've loaded that class. But better reflection actually makes this possible, could make this possible, possible in the future, rather. As I mentioned, you can get types. So uh, we can use docblocks to infer types. Uh, obviously, types, uh, type declarations have made it into PHP 7, which has uh, just been recently been released, if you didn't hear somehow. Um, and we can get that information from doc blocks and from the PHP 7 uh, type declarations if they exist. Uh, we can get the same thing about uh, the return types as well. So I'm just going to very quickly show you how to use meta reflection. We try to stay as similar, uh, similar as possible to core reflection API. Where we uh, instantiated a new reflection like this uh, with the new reflection class. Um, in meta reflection, you just use reflection class code and on create from name. All the other functions that you get back are the same. So this is a little bit about how under the hood it works. As I mentioned, we've got these source locators. When you're doing this create, when you're calling create from name, you're uh, building a, a default list of source locators to use uh, the PHP internal source locator so you can uh, reflect on internal classes. Also eval code and auto loading code as well. And some very quick voodoo. Um, this is actually a pull request that exists at the moment, but it says do not merge for a reason. Um, but yeah, we can do some monkey patching. We've got a class, very simple, returns fine. We reflect on the class with better reflection. And note that you have to do this before it's loaded, because PHP can't unload classes at the moment. Uh, grab, the reflection, uh, grab the reflection method and override the body by giving it a lambda function. Then we do a bit of ugly looking code that basically saves it to a file, requires it once, and deletes the temporary file. Not a great process, still working on that. But basically, when you run that and var dump the result of that, it will be four. Well, you can use all the things that you currently use reflection for. Uh, you could do monkey patching in the future. You could do detailed static analysis, especially with the types. Works with stuff that's less than PHP 7 as well, obviously, as I mentioned with doc blocks. You could do API analysis, for example, detecting when a public API changes with releases. And you could restructure an API as well. For example, you might want to remove scalar type declarations. And of course, it's free and open source, and you can use it whenever you want. So what's in the future? Well, we've got some things done. Something that we're working on, uh, for example, more compatibility with core reflection, so you could just take it as a drop in replacement. Uh, a load of other things, and we've got some ideas as well. Um, for example, get following, get column, further PHP 7 compatibility, and so on. It's also quite a lot slower than uh, core reflection at the moment, so one of our aims is to make it faster, um, but that's in the future. So, what else could there be? Maybe you've got some ideas, maybe some functionality you'd like. Feel free to create a feature request or we'll report some bugs. Um, please do report some bugs because we want to see this being used in the wild and uh, uh, see what we can make of it. Uh, and of course, pull requests are always well. So here's the URL again. It's github.com slash rove slash better reflection. And that's a very quick introduction about better reflection and reflection in general. And that's it for me. Are there any questions? Nope, no questions. Awesome talk. I really enjoyed the, the slides. Uh, let's see. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Make sure you visit Joined In and leave James some feedback, and have a good night. <laughs>